Hi everybody, Dylan Schneezy here. I have an announcement at the beginning of this video. From the request of a friend, they, they said that we should split our channel into two, two different channels to cover the two different uh, topics that, that we have on our channel. So going forward, I'm, I'm going to create a separate, either a separate channel or a separate playlist for topics concerning more of the farming and homesteading portion of what we do, which will be steady presence uh, farm and homestead, or I'll just uh, say in the opening of the video, steady presence farms. And then the other portion will be the uh, fertility and pregnancy uh, portion of what we do. So in case anybody wants to just watch the parts uh, where I talk about what we do on the homestead, uh, you have that option. So what we're gonna talk about today is the second principle of the permaculture, uh, of, of the uh, permaculture design uh, principles, and that is capture and store energy. <clears throat> so I wanna start off with a funny story of uh, how our culture doesn't seem to understand this principle. So, when I was a kid, we used to watch Everyone Loves Raymond. And in the first episode of this show, they, they capture this sentiment perfectly. So the son thinks that he's gonna do his uh, parents a really nice favor uh, by signing them up for the fruit of the month club and so he signs them up for this club and then he tells them about it and says yeah uh, I signed you up for the fruit of the month club um, you'll be getting uh, fruit uh, each day or uh, one once per month and they said oh my gosh how could you do this to us how are we gonna eat all of that fruit and so it just, it shows that, uh, that our culture doesn't really see the value in taking a surplus amount of something and storing it for later use. So that's what I'll talk about. I'll feed these ducks so it's a little quieter. Okay, a little here, a little for you. We haven't been getting a lot of eggs from our ducks and I think it's because we have to feed them more. We were, we were thinking that they were getting enough from the pasture, but I don't think that's right. Or rather, my wife doesn't think that's right. So she uh, she helps me make the right decisions. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so uh, capture and store energy. Rather, the principle should be called capture and store energy while the energy is abundant. Because you can, let's say in the winter, you can capture apples, but they're frozen and they're shriveled up on the trees and it's not abundant. So what we've done recently is we noticed a farm, uh, a local farm, was inundated with a lot of duck and chicken eggs. So they put on a sale for uh, chicken eggs $1, duck eggs $2, so that they could get rid of them. Well, if they were, if they knew about permaculture and this principle, that would tell them, hey, I have this excess, these excess eggs, or this really it's excess energy in the form of eggs, Let's capture that 
and store it for later use. Uh, but uh, instead, they, they put them up for sale because they they think of all these eggs as a problem. And so we were we kindly uh, took them up on their offer, and we stored that energy. We put those eggs in our storage for later use. Another good example of capturing and storing energy is in terms of water and in terms of heat. And I'm gonna give you an example that captures both of those. So <clears throat> whenever I leave, let's say to go out somewhere for the day and I'm filling up, let's say my water bottle, I not only fill up my water bottle, but I take a very large glass of water and drink it. So what am I doing? I'm capturing and storing the, the energy that that water, not calorically, water doesn't give you energy calorically, but it <clears throat> provides you energy throughout the day uh, because it breaks down the food and then makes your body work. Anyway, I don't have to explain that. But instead of just having the water in the water bottle, I also have that water on my person, so I've doubled my capacity of storing water on me. And especially if it's a hot day, I've now increased my capacity to take on more heat as I'm uh, doing my uh, doing my tasks outside. Uh, bear with me, I got a. Uh, yeah. I am carrying you guys while also moving a wheelbarrow. There we go. Uh, another way to capture and store energy is uh, financially. So, economically speaking, to spend to spend your energy working for a paycheck, let's say, and holding, holding that money as cash with what we've seen at uh, the grocery store and at gas pumps is that storing that money in, in cash long term loses its value. Uh, we, we give that term, the term we give that is inflation. And so it's best to store your financial energy in something that won't lose its value over time. Whether this be uh, the stock market, if that's, if that's what you consider a uh, valuable store of energy, or uh, on our homestead, we convert financial energy into tools that we use on the, the homestead, into stored food for, for us and the animals. We convert cash into infrastructure, like fencing and the uh, electric net that we have over by the ducks. So now that that financial energy is transferred into the energy of being able to contain animals. And now we can take that infrastructure and uh, that'll allow us to move sheep in the future. And then I won't get into it here, but another way to store financial energy is through cryptocurrency. I won't, I won't explain it here, uh, but if you're ever interested in learning more about that, reach out and uh, maybe I can talk more about it. But I try, to, I try to keep that topic to a minimum because I myself am not a, uh, I, I don't hold a lot of my uh, financial energy uh, in that currently. So I'm not gonna talk about it, but it's an option. Uh, another good example is the, the barn. 
we're going to be putting water uh, harvesting totes on, uh, I don't know which side, but wherever, wherever the rain falls off it, we're going to capture that energy, store the water in the water catchment totes, and then use that to water our gardens in the future. So, I mean, in, in terms of uh, in terms of capturing that energy, the the rain falls down as kinetic energy falls into our troughs, and then is held in the trough, and that water is not moving anymore, but it's at an elevation. So we've stored that the potential energy for that water to then water our gardens when we open the hose. So there's many ways to look at how to capture and store energy. And it doesn't, it doesn't just have to be in terms of uh, farming and homesteading. Look at, look at your life and see what forms of energy are currently not being stored and, and start storing them. Start putting away some extra food because that's that's a uh, that's a form of energy that you're going to use anyway. Why not put some extra away? And I'm not talking about going crazy and getting a bunch of rice and beans, but let's say our family uses hemp seeds, chia seeds, and oatmeal and tuna. They don't all go together, but that's what we use on a regular basis. So if I know, I know that I'm always going to eat tuna and my kids will always eat oatmeal. Well, let's take the uh, surplus financial energy that we've created and convert that into something that can be stored and retain value. And stored food is stored energy and it's stored value. So th think about other things in your life that, that could be stored. Let me know what you come up with and stay tuned for the next permaculture principle. I want to say it's value diversity, but I'll let you know at the next episode. All right, take care, everybody.